In the Phone Wars series, we're going to start covering flagship smartphones from Google, Samsung, Nokia, HTC, and Motorola. In this pilot episode, let's kick things off with the phone that has changed phones forever. Apple hosts some of the best media events bar none. For some context, nostalgia, and to see how far Apple has advanced over the years, check out these keynote highlights for a short history and a highlight video of today's keynote. So far in 2012, we've seen the Galaxy S3, Lumia 920, One X, and Droid Razor HD. But the elephant in the smartphone space is the iPhone 5. What does it have? Why why should I upgrade? It's lighter, taller, thinner, and faster. Let's break it down like we do. In terms of design and chip upgrades, Apple usually follows a two-year cycle, and this year was no exception. Originally, Apple went with a three and a half inch screen because it would be easy to use with one hand. Then the iPhone 5 and 4S blew away the industry with the Retina display at 640 by 960 resolution and 326 pixels per inch. During the transition period, developers updated apps with Retina resolution content. Now that Apple stopped production of the iPhone 3GS, the transition to Retina displays in iPhone is complete. The iPhone 5 is the third major redesign Design. The screen is bigger, taller by half an inch, to be specific, with a resolution of 640 by 1136 at 326 ppi. So what? You get a fifth row of icons and more reading space. Apple usually focuses on narrow, unified product lines for one main reason. Software development and content creation is way easier with a standard screen size. Just ask any Android developer. Over time, good apps will be iPhone 5 optimized with an increase in touch targets, and the transition could be complete by 2015. In the meantime, old apps will be letterboxed. Second, it's thinner and lighter. Gorilla Glass 2 makes the device thinner while still resisting scratches, and the metal back should limit the number of people who have to live with this. Also, most touch devices layer sensors on top of the screen's color filters. In the iPhone 5, the touch sensors and color filters are fused together, giving 44% better color saturation and reducing glare. This, together with the metal back, reduces the thickness from 9.3 to 7.6 millimeters. It lost some weight too, going from 140 grams to 112 grams, making it 20% lighter. I need to do that too. The headphone jack at the bottom mimics the iPod, and for me, this makes it easier to tuck it away in my pocket. Lastly, the nine-year-old 30-pin dock connector shrank to a 9-pin lightning oh, connector. No. But don't worry, Apple will sell you proprietary adapters for legacy accessories and docks. Finally, it comes in the same two colors, white or black. Now let's look at the guts. First, data speeds more than double. Saving a comparison of wireless carriers for another episode, with 4G LTE, most people can expect Wi-Fi level data speeds. Also, the Wi-Fi itself was upgraded to dual channel 802.11n, and the new A6 processor benefits from the die shrink, improving performance and power efficiency. Check out Chip Wars episode eight for an overview. The battery's better, with eight hours of talk time or 10 hours of Wi-Fi browsing. The eight megapixel camera has a more durable sapphire lens cover, and the enhanced image processor on the A6 chip does a better job at color matching. But the highlight is the panorama feature, allowing for a 28 megapixel photo. The front camera is now 720p for higher quality FaceTime calls, if your carrier supports it. There's now three microphones for voice recognition, noise cancellation, and more natural sounding voice calls. Apple is also throwing in a noise cancelling earpiece. There's more information coming out, so subscribe for the next episodes covering a hands-on review, iPhone 5 accessories, the iPod lineup refresh, and a US wireless carrier review. You. Sorry, international viewers. Thanks, subscribers, for supporting the channel with your likes and comments for as long as you have. Your input keeps this channel fresh, but I need to ask you for a small favor. Please share this video to people who might benefit from it. For new viewers, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Or better yet, check the box for email notifications and follow me on Twitter to stay updated. It helps me figure out when the videos are great, meh, or fail. Talk to you all in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.